What's up everybody? Welcome back to episode 4 of the Monster Fish series. Today we're going to be taking a look at my giant albino gourami. That is right, I said it a couple of videos ago when we were setting up the 200 litre tank that we were going to do a special episode on the giant gourami itself and today is that day. So, let's jump right into the video. So this here is Edward my giant albino gourami. Um, I got him or her, we're not actually sure, I think it might be a her. Uh, we got Edwards about three months ago, mid-February, uh, at only 12 centimeters. Edward is probably slightly bigger than my hand. Uh, which gives you a kind of scale for how fast these things grow. They don't grow tremendously fast when you compare them to other monster fish like the red tail catfish or the arowana or certainly not to the paku. Um, but still, they grow fairly fast. Uh, talking about how fast they grow, they can grow in the home aquarium. They can grow anywhere from 2 feet to about 28 inches. So, two, uh, two feet, four inches. So that's a fairly big fish. Uh, which means that you need a fairly big tank to keep them in. Minimum requirement is around 200 gallons, which is probably a seven foot long tank. Seven foot, maybe eight foot long tank. Um, two feet, three feet deep. Cool thing about this fish, super weird fish, uh, it's one of the few fish that has to, or has the ability to gasp air from the surface. Um, I don't know if he's going to do it for you, but one of the cool things a fish can do is, yeah, it can gulp air from the surface. It's um, part of the labyrinth labyrinthian family. Uh, so this includes like other beta fish and smaller gouramis. And they have um, a specialized organ on the top of their head, which allows them to take in air more or less. Uh, this fish pretty much eats anything. Uh, I've given it sinking pellets, floating pellets, shrimp, uh, blood worms, you name it. It can pretty much eat anything you want to feed it. Um, insects, you know, whatever you really want to feed them. I'm going to go ahead and feed some blood worms. Which Edward really does love, as you can see. So, other than its size, what else makes this fish a monster fish? Uh, if you guys have been following the channel recently, you will have no doubt heard about the loss of my smallest arowana dragon. Um, now, Edward wasn't the one to kill him, but he was definitely the one who pretty much crippled him. At a certain size, Gromis can get fairly aggressive. They're usually aggressive to one another but they can get aggressive to any other fish in the tank as well. He was also very aggressive to my bigger arowana, which is why I moved him out of the tank as well. Um, he is doing a lot better in the pool pond again. But, relatively speaking, once they've gone through this phase, they are a relatively peaceful fish. Uh, like I've said, I've kept the gourami with other fish. I've kept them with paku and whatnot, and they've been completely fine. Uh, it was just an error on my part where I didn't have enough fish to defuse the aggression, but I've learned that mistake and hopefully I won't be making it again anytime soon. So that is one thing to keep in mind. These fish get big and they can have an attitude. So if you want to keep them, you need a big tank, you need a decent amount of space and you would need a decent amount of fish that don't fit in its mouth because if a fish will fit in its mouth, it will eat it. That is for sure. Uh... I will hopefully find some of the images that I had when I first had Edward in the 120 upstairs when I first got him, super small. Uh, just so you can do like a before and after. The sponge filter is the same sponge filter that is in the 120 upstairs and that will kind of be your reference point to see how big Edward has actually grown in the last three to four months. Uh, just so you can actually tell like how fast they grow. But I think that this fish is actually quite a beautiful fish. Um, 
you know, it's just that stark pearly white that it has to it, which is very unique among fish. And I do think that it looks a lot better than the basic giant gourami. The giant gourami looks... When, when it gets bigger, and I will do updates on all of these monster fish um, in the future, but once this fish gets bigger, it doesn't look as nice as it did when it was a little fish. So you'll eventually see what I mean by that. But the fact that this is an albino just helps make it look that bit better because the original doesn't have much going for it in terms of looks or color. At least this has a unique and nice color. I'm not actually 100% sure what else we can talk about in terms of the giant albino gourami. Like I said, it gets fairly big, it eats a lot of food, and it's not very picky when it comes to what it eats. Uh, I think <laughs> the thing, the thing is, um, this is a very aggressive eater, so not in terms of it'll be aggressive towards the other fish, obviously, it's just it'll go after the food, so you just need to make sure that all the fish get the food that they want when you keep them in a community tank, more or less. But, as you can see, it's just going for some air. It's a very unique fish in the way it looks. It gets fairly long, but on top of it getting long, it gets pretty chunky too, um, height-wise and even width-wise. So you don't have to worry about these fish getting eaten by anything. Um, once they are at their full size, you can put them in with more or less anything, um, up to four or six feet even. And I doubt anything will go to try and eat it. It's a very large fish. It's not, um, it's not like an arowana, which just goes really long, but doesn't get much height. Uh, so you can keep them, I think, honestly, you can keep them with your paku, your arowana, probably red tail catfish as well. Um, snakeheads, what have you, gar, you know, this fish isn't going to get pushed around anytime soon, it is a big fish. Um, but yeah, this fish is quite unique in that it pretty much swims everywhere up and down the tank. Most fish kind of have a level where they prefer to be in this tank, uh, in tanks in general. So you'll have arowanas that swim up at the top. You'll have catfish that like to swim down at the bottom, and you'll have mid-level fish like your paku. This fish more or less goes everywhere. It goes to the bottom, as you can see, to go get food. It'll go to the top if there are floating pellets at the top. It goes to the top to breathe, and it more or less just glides around um, the middle of the tank. Now, I'm not sure how it is for all of you, uh, or how it is for every gourami, but especially in my case, he does not like things coming close to the glass, he gets quite spooked by it. Um, I don't know if it's just a size thing, so when it gets bigger it'll be more chilled out. Um, but that is one thing to consider, is that if you are going to put this in a tank, just make sure it does have enough room to swim around, because if they, are, gets, if they do get skittish, um, it is very easy for them to then obviously hurt themselves. That is the reason why I've left the Paku in the pool pond, because if I put them in here they'd just be all over the place, the big fish, very fast, very powerful, probably bang into something and hurt themselves. Um, so that is one thing to keep in mind. When it comes to how often to feed these fish, once they're around this size, you really don't have to feed them daily. These things can go a day or two without eating any food, um, and they'll be completely fine. In fact, I need to do a water change on this tank. Uh, I haven't done a water change in about a week, and as you can see, there isn't a tremendous amount of mess in the tank. So... If you do want to try and reduce the amount of times you have to do a water change, maybe just feed them every other day or every two days you take a break and you feed them off that. Um, because, yeah, big fish are able to go extra, you know, longer without having any food. So, these fish um, prefer temperature ranges of 22 degrees to 25 degrees, 26 degrees. That is, like, their optimal Obviously, you can go a degree or two out either way, preferably not. Um, and again, pH range, anywhere from 6 to 8 is what I found. Especially, uh, most fish in the aquarium hobby tend to be able to withstand these um, parameters a bit more because obviously, it is the hobby you can't exactly replicate the water parameters correctly and you don't also know how they are kept during the breeding facilities and when they're kept in the stores. So if anybody actually wonders where these fish come from, they come from Southeast Asia. 
So you're talking about like Thailand, Indonesia, that sort of region of the world. So unlike the Paku and the Arowana, which come from South America, this is an Asian fish. Um, in fact, I, if I'm not mistaken, they are farmed for food in some places. But don't quote me on that, I'm not 100% sure. I think I've more or less summed up the points as to what makes this a monster fish. Um, um, the basic care guide to taking care of it. Obviously, when these fish get bigger, I will be able to do more in-depth videos as to how the personality is, a bit of like background stories on them. Uh, the only interesting story I have with this guy is obviously the, the unhappy incident which happened between him and the Arowanas. But, hey ho. Uh, I think the, the coolest thing will be obviously like, you know, six months down the line, seeing how big this fish has gotten. Uh, there's not really much else to say about the fish. There's no other difficulty other than that mistake I made in the slight aggression where the easiest way to sort of work around the aggression is either to do what I've done temporarily, which is to just leave it by itself in its own tank and it's completely fine, or it's to have more fish in the tank than it can possibly try and bully, which will have to happen when we get the bigger tank. Um, but yeah, otherwise I think it's an awesome fish. It looks, it looks very unique. You don't have very many fish with this sort of build. Um, it's got a very unique body in terms of, you know, it's got a pointed head, but then it rounds out and kind of enlarges towards the back. And it's got this very amazing uh, fin at the bottom of its body, which just has this very unique shape. So, you know, it just looks very different to most fish. Even the tail looks a bit different to most other fish. Uh, so it's a very unique looking fish in general. But yeah, you know, it is a pretty big fish. Yeah. So it, again, like I said, it doesn't really like me coming too close to it. But as you can see, it's roughly around the same size as my hand. Slightly bigger, I think, just from the tail popping out. But... Yeah, so that is the albino giant garami. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Uh, we will be doing something different in the next video. Uh, we've been doing a lot on the garage, the filters, the pool pond, the 200 litre and all these big fish. So I think we're going to take a break from that for a little while and focus on some of the other tanks that we've got going. Because I think you guys might be a bit like, he has other fish, doesn't he? So I'm going to go ahead and end it here for today. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys are keeping safe. And as always, peace out.